Hi, I'm Pastor Paul Horn, National Chaplain to the Military. When I was in Hawaii this past October, part of our group hiked up to the Makapu'u Lighthouse on Oahu. There was a memorial there near the summit that reads, Not far from here on April 5th, 1942, nine American naval aviators perished in the service of their country. After 12 and a half hours of patrolling the waters off the coast of Hawaii for enemy forces, they crashed their seaplane, trying to land in foul weather and darkness. Mistaking the Makapu'u Lighthouse for Barber's Point Lighthouse, and hit the hillside during a low altitude circling maneuver. You understand the importance of seeing clearly. Clarity of vision is necessary to carry out successful missions. Whether those are up in the sky, out at sea, looking down from the camera of a drone, or peering across the battlefield, clarity of vision is a matter of life and death. But we like that clarity in life too. We want to clearly see the road of life marked out for us, where we're going, our promotion cycle, our next duty station, retirement, a new vo vocation, marriage, children. But the reality is we can't see the future. And I can't tell you where you'll deploy next or when, where your next duty station will be. I can't tell you about retirement or promotion or marriage or children or sickness or health or prosperity or poverty. I wish that I could stand on top of a mountain and see clearly into your future and mine. But there is someone who stood on top of a mountain and clearly saw his future. One day during his ministry, Jesus took three of his disciples, Peter, John, and James, up to the top of a high mountain. And while he was praying, he was transfigured there before them. His clothes became white as lightning, his face shone like the sun, and the brilliance of it all caused these three disciples to fall flat on their faces before him. See, what Jesus had done was he displayed his full glory to his friends. He pulled back the curtain, so to speak, to show them the glory of his divinity. See, during his life, he had kept this hidden for the most part. His friends saw glimpses of his glory as he healed the sick, cast out demons, raised the dead. But now they saw him in all of his divine glory as he revealed his true nature, not just as true man, but also as true God in that one person of Jesus. And to make all of this even more brilliant, he talked about his departure. Six months from that moment, Jesus would be betrayed by one of his own disciples and arrested and tortured and crucified and die and be buried. And three days rise again from the dead. And it all happened just as clearly as he saw it on that mountain, because he's God. Jesus clearly sees your future, as cloudy as it may appear to be from your viewpoint on the mountain. But there he stands with you to point you back, first of all, to the past, to clearly show you all that he has done for you. His perfect, sin-free life lived for you. His death died for you which means your forgiveness is complete. His glorious resurrection from the dead, he points you back and shows you clearly the day of your baptism, the day that he gifted you all that is his, his life, his death, his resurrection. And those are yours now. And at the top of the mountain, he pivots with you to look into your future and shows you very clearly that these gifts go with you your entire life, your baptism, his life, his death, his resurrection, and eternal life in heaven. And so we say, how good, Lord, to be here, to behold you in all of your glory, to marvel at your divinity, to wonder at your omniscience, and to bow in humble thanksgiving that you would stand here with us on the mountain to clearly show us our future, a future that ends in our death, but begins with eternity with you. We pray. Lord God, before the suffering and death of your one and only Son, you revealed his glory on the holy mountain. Grant that we who bear his cross here on earth may behold by faith the light of his heavenly glory 
and so be changed into his likeness. Help us to clearly see that our future rests in the promises of him who lived, died, and rose again for us. Lord, this week we celebrate with the USO, the United Service Organization, which celebrates its birthday on February 4th. Since 1941, the USO's mission has been to strengthen the well-being of the people serving in America's military and their families. Through assignments, deployments, and transition to civilian life, the USO has stood by the side of our military members and their families. And so, Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless the USO with dedicated volunteers, the necessary funding, and faithful leaders to provide for the welfare of our troops and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please like, subscribe, and share these devotions. To learn more about ministry to the military, go to wells.net slash military.